podcast. I'm sitting here with my good friend Jonathan. Hi. And we're gonna listen to your story today, man. So tell us, tell us where it all starts. Uh, okay. Um, so yeah, let's see. Where'd you grow up? A lot of places. So my dad was a he was a pilot in the Navy, and then he flew for the airlines. And uh, so growing up, I thought I had a, a pretty normal childhood. I mean, like right. I really didn't didn't want for anything. That kind of deal, That's you know. Right? I didn't really want for anything. Yeah, it was okay. It's like if I wanted anything, I I had it. Um, right. The way was a pilot, so was he gone a lot? A lot. Yeah. 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 Was so, your mom stay at home mom? For the most part, I mean, she like substitute taught for a little while when I was a little kid, and then she worked, I think, at a bank or something. I don't know. She had a couple jobs when I was little. Yeah. We did like the whole latchkey after school thing for a while, and but um. Yeah, so lived in, I was born in New Orleans, lived in San Diego, lived in Columbus, Ohio, back to San Diego, then uh, moved to Boulder City, like started school, yeah, all those places. Fourth grade, we moved to Vegas. Um, So pretty much grew up in Las Vegas after that, so yeah. Did you go to high school from there? (laughs) Funny story, we'll get to that. Yeah, we can get to that, yeah, yeah. (laughs) So you move around, like, do you, do you, what's your first memory of like, uh, I, I know I never had to deal with that. I never moved around as a kid. So, but I can imagine as a kid, like you, you probably get used to it eventually. I like, I think I did. Cause it was, it was the norm. Right. Like, I mean, wherever we went and I was so young, it was just like, make some new friends, whatever, staying in right. touch with a couple. Yeah. I guess for a little bit. <laughs> for a little bit. Apart, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It, it took a much bigger toll on like on my brother. He was like, well, I never had a home base and stuff like that. And I'm just like, youngest? I'm the youngest. Okay. I got a, a brother that's five years older than me and a sister that's two years older oh, than me. Okay. Yeah, so. Dad's a pilot, three kids. Mom's pretty much a stay-at-home mom. And she's busy with the two of them. So I – and I, I'm like the, the little angel and I can yeah. get away with it, anything. because right. But I really didn't do anything wrong. So I don't know. Um but like, as far as the one constant that I had was my brother, right? Um, until we moved to Vegas, and then he found some friends and started so started you doing been his in thing. Fourth grade, so he would have been in high school. So yeah, typical older brother, younger brother split. Yep. Know. So I mean, uh, what about grandparents or any extended family? Did you see everybody's them? from Texas? Reason? Okay. So my my parents grew up just outside of Lubbock. Right. Um, Everybody lived here or okay. elsewhere, so we right. were we were on our own. We saw family probably once a year right. growing up, maybe twice, yeah. special occasions, holidays. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's a lot to move around that much. But, I mean, at least in fourth grade, like, sticking around, like, that's a pretty good, I guess, foundation, you know? I mean, a lot of my memories before fourth grade are pretty blurry, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, e- even I after that, like, mine are. But... Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> But I feel like uh, it may not affect you as much as junior high and high school. I feel like those years are pretty uh, essential to your development and your personality and, you know, all those Absolutely. things. So um, what was the – like when was the first time you remember – like what was your first negative experience in life, like loss or trauma or, you know – I mean, was it around anything like the move or was it – I mean – what like what's your earliest memory of something like that affected you like made you sad or made you you know what I mean? One of the moves like I, I saw a for sale sign and I was just like that's what? How you it out. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. It's like, I didn't uh, even tell you. No, no. But yeah, I guess you're so used to the process, so that was like. Yeah, I didn't want to move again. Right. I, I was. I finally felt like at home in San Diego, and then it was just like, okay, yeah. we're moving to Nevada. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, that and then like family members, older family members dying right, um, right. getting used to that but so you said you were like really close to your brother and like that's that was a big connection to you through all that to kind of carry you through is like being buddies with your brother i guess and uh yeah uh up until a, a point where right. we, uh we really grew apart but like even with i always looked up to him and and all of his friends I, I got real close to them they were like older brothers and whatnot right. um and when they started partying i just kind of fell in suit and like at 12, 13 started drinking and smoking weed with them. And right. what was the first thing you did? 
Like smoke. first time you got high, like what, what was it? Just smoke weed? Or, yeah. 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 What was your like first thought? Like when you were high? Oh, it was great. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. how it was. I was like, you know, the first I was like, time this I, is it. Yeah. This, this is it. This, this is who I am. Where's this been? Yeah, Why haven't yeah, I? This yeah. is who I am now. That was my thought. Uh-huh. You know, like it, it really quickly became part of my identity. Was it like that for you? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, um, that was your first experience was doing it, using with your, getting high with your brother. Yeah. Yeah. So that was like the same for my little brother. Like we would get him high and get drunk. You know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, um, fourth grade, y'all moved to Vegas. Like how, how soon after that did you like try weed for the first time? Uh, I think it was like between sixth and seventh grade, okay. something like that. In mm-hmm. sixth grade, I'd been drinking a little bit. Um, I don't know. I, I, right. Apparently that's not as early as I thought anymore. Oh, yeah. I mean, it depends. I, yeah. I tried alcohol when I was twelve, but it, I mean, yeah, I didn't. But like twelve, thirteen, like things became kind of kind of normal, right. um, or they became a little more routine every now and then, kind of things. Things on the weekend, um, right. still real active in school. Yeah. Um, did really well in school really? up and up until like. 10th grade uh, yeah same that's like i was like uh in all the extra stuff you know and then mm-hmm. i started getting high and i in high school but i didn't give a fuck about any of it but in junior high i just started skateboarding rollerblading um playing music hanging out with right. friends and doing that a little more but always hanging out with my brother and his friends so right they were always getting me trashed and thought it was funny. So. Yeah, that's what we would do. We'd just feed my bro- little brother beers and then yeah. laugh at him when he's puking exactly like, assholes <laughs> yeah so, I mean, um, your brother's five years older than you. So, like, what what was your high school experience like? Uh, I guess pretty average in the beginning. Um, played football, wrestled, threw right. discus you a and good, track. Good um, student until I, grade yeah, seven? I was a good student. I yeah. I went to class and right. did the work, and I, that's did really you all you got to do. Right, yeah. No, I got my GD. Really? Uh, yeah, had to. Had to do that. I would have been a fifth year senior at the time that that came along. So like in tenth grade, it, it just things really went downhill. Yeah. Um, I just started partying a lot, yeah. and that that took precedence over everything else. Was it like after you got your license? It was before. It was yeah. everybody else was getting theirs. My birthday's in May. All right. And uh, so it was like at the end of the year. I feel like um, once you get a car, like that changes everything. Like yeah, like, come eleventh grade. Or even just, just your friends, if they start getting cars. Uh. Yeah, we stopped going to class. Mm. Um, and then I didn't understand how people still went to school when <laughs> I was just like, I have so much other shit to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I mean, um, like, when was, like, what was your first time you did like anything other than drinking or smoking? Like, what was your first drug you took? Uh, acid. Yeah? Yeah, acid yeah, was, uh, I was in ninth grade, so 14. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. That's um. Funny. Yeah, it was like good time ah. trip, like no no bad trip or anything. Or? No, it was it was great. Right. Laughed my ass off, had a good time. Yeah. Nothing like nothing too, too a, bad. out of body or I don't know. It wasn't yeah. like a huge mind trip. It was like a huge body high, and I just laughed my ass off and really, yeah, shit moved and it was funny and that was it. Yeah, uh, it wasn't till later on that I took heroic doses and. <laughs> <laughs> really saw like things a, that I yeah. nobody should see the, the old Timothy Leary dose mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. but, or so I mean so you said that you had to go you had to go back and get your DED so like what was what was going on with you like you know when you should have graduated high school uh, I was getting Just too partying too much and were you, but you were going you weren't going to class and so oh no I'd, I stopped going to class completely like during during 12th grade okay. actually and then uh, there was a point where I went to alternative school and um all we were doing was meeting up and ditching that and getting right. high. And then uh, I just kind of gave up on that. And then I decided I was going to go back as a fifth year senior yeah. and, uh, and, and graduate or try to. And then I was just like, yeah, I'm not doing this right. and got my GD instead. Yeah. But, so, I mean, um, you got your GD, like, did you get it like right after that? Or I mean, so immediately 19, after like, that, 18, 19, you got uh, it? I was 18 and, and, that's good. and got it. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people have to go back when they're 22 and 23 and they forgot everything, you know, yeah. so that's good. Well, uh, I'd, I hadn't really been to class yeah. in two years at that point, but still, still pulled it off. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, after all that, like what, what were you working or you just working to like, party or were you still living at home or i was still living at home yeah. um my 
My sister, well, let's see. She moved out a few times and then back in and moved out. And Your sister's two years older than you? Yeah. Right. She and I, like... Did y'all party together? No. We did not get along at all. Really? She... Yeah, she ruined the party. Uh, um, she was... Uh, let's see. She was one of those good kids, and she would tell on us for everything. Uh, and then once I moved away, I find out she's all strung out on meth. And oh, worse fuck. than, like, cooking meth and getting going to prison. And I'm just like, wow, Damn. that changed. Yeah. Um, and she's doing great now. That's Anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for a while there, we did not get along. When we saw each other, it was just like gloves off. And, really? Yeah. <laughs> and then for a while, it was the same thing with my brother. Uh, he... Moved away a couple times, came back. Uh, I was still in high school, and it was just like it got to the point where he was doing so much meth and just drinking so much. And was, yeah. Whenever we'd see each other, it was like I hated meth. I would still do it, but I hated it, <laughs> and I looked down on anybody that that did it right. like all the time. And it was yeah. just like once a month, once every couple months. Yeah, let's get down and yeah. but like. It's like, why don't you just smoke weed, drink pop pills, do coke, all like yeah, yeah, normal stuff, that, you know? Yeah. Eat a big old bag of shrooms, and, right. but meth, that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, uh, he and I would get in a lot of fights. Um, yeah. We are all living at home-ish around Ish this at, at those times. Right. My sister moved out for the longest period of time. Um, my parents ended up basically moving out. My parents got a divorce. I think I was a junior in oh, high okay. school, yeah. uh, or it was leading up to that. My dad was never there anyways, so right. it's like, all right. Uh, and then he ended up moving to Pittsburgh, and um, it was easier for him to commute with flying. And right. and uh, my mom ended up moving out in with her her friend, uh, this other guy. And, uh, her friend. Yeah. The old so, uncle. Yeah. <laughs> the old uncle routine. Yeah, so I mean, that's yeah. a pretty late age, I feel, for your parents to get divorced, you know? Like, I happened to me when I was nine, but it was like, yeah. I feel like I got over it pretty quick, you know? I mean, I'm sure it affected me a little bit, like, as a young adult, but, like, I'm sure, what was it, what was the vibe that, I mean, what, what did, how did I it just, make you feel when your parents got divorced at that no, I, age? I, I, I was your dad's really, not around, so. I was I mean, angry and I was hurt, but at the same time, it was just like, I don't care. I I just right. kept doing everything that I was doing. And, no. So, I mean, how did, how did they act about y'all? Like, did they... Did they know about y'all's drinking and partying? Oh, they—they cool they knew. It? They knew about my brother. They um, and they enabled. They they enabled all of us right. throughout all of this stuff. And no matter how bad things were, like I, I, they didn't know that I was failing out of school until like I was, I was like, hey, yeah, I I need to get my GED, and they're like, wait, what? Yeah, it's like yeah, I hadn't and. Like I quit playing sports after ninth grade. Like I haven't been to school basically since tenth grade for Damn. two years now, and y'all haven't just, noticed. It was a surprise to them. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> yeah. So like everything that I said, they they believed. Um, they had no reason to not believe it. I I kept it under wraps for the most part. Um, yeah. I moved a girlfriend in with us when, and basically had a big four bedroom house to myself uh, <laughs> in Vegas at eighteen. Wow. Which is. Not good. Horrible. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a, a bad scene. Oh, yeah. Anyways. Um, yeah, so, I mean, uh, after high school, you, so, you, like, is it, you partying, you working? I mean, your priorities are just, dr- like, getting fucked up with your friends. I mean. That was, that was basically that's it. That's what I was. Uh, what I did. worked I mean. at a couple of car dealerships, worked at some restaurants, um, little shit jobs. Oh, yeah. Like, nothing ever serious. And then, uh. Things went really bad with that girl who was living with me. Um, and I, like I was always, I was the nice guy. I was the the like I landed this girl and she was hot and I was just like, how did this happen? And right. I was so in love and and she cheated on me left and right. Fuck. And it was it was just a shitty situation and I just let it all happen. Yeah. And then finally it was, I got home and I'd been out drinking with a buddy and I go in the house. She's sitting at a table with a bunch of her friends, and they're all smoking weed and drinking. And one of the dudes I know she's fucking. I'm just like, get out! Oh, are you getting? Uh, it it just got ugly. It got real loud. Uh, yeah. Um, used to get in fights over that girl all the time with like her her exes who she kept seeing, and right. and then with that dude that night, and I don't know. Were you? I mean, I, I, my, at that age, like I was so desperate for 
like love and like affection and like a, a, a woman in my life you know what i mean that i put yeah. that that was like top priority like that and then drugs and partying was it like that for you well it was like drugs and partying and then the girl right um yeah yeah what nothing gonna stop me if she stopped i wasn't gonna it was, yeah. there was uh, i thought i was in love yeah, of um, course yeah Nah, that was that was a big long like three year infatuation that ended badly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then so, so that night you like you know throw a fit and kick them out. Was that the end of it? I mean, uh, no. So cops going. came and oh. then they helped uh, her and her sister like loot my parents' house and. Um, no shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. While well, I was sitting there with my head bleeding on the porch, and then they wanted to take me to jail, and like they let me use the phone, and my mom shows up, and she's, anyways. It the got cops loud. Help them loot the place. Yeah, they, let them. Let them. Okay. Help them. I'll, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I don't understand, but I don't know if they're in on it. No. Nah. <laughs> Anyways, um, the cops like get the TV. They're like, get your stuff. Don't worry about it. He's not going anywhere. He's going to jail. This I'm like, I'm going to jail. This guy said I'm not. This guy says I am. What's going on here? Yeah. So I ended up not going to jail. That's cool. Um, and then I found out like, I don't know. Long story short, she was fucking the cops. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get the hell out of Vegas after that. Um, yeah. Things had I just needed a needed an, a fresh start. All I right. felt, and uh, my dad was like, "Hey, why don't you come up to Pittsburgh?" And uh, I mean, you got your GD. We can get you in like this this JC up here. And it's like, all right, let's do that. So I go up there, and and it's cold. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's real cold. Um, and I met some uh, some hippie kids and started just. Smoking a lot of weed, going to festivals. Yeah, right. Back in the same deal, drinking, smoking, eating mushrooms up there, and yeah. then, uh, and then along came heroin. Yeah. And how old were you when you tried heroin the first time? Uh, nineteen. Okay, damn, yeah. that's early. I was like twenty five, twenty four. Right. That's young to try heroin. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So snort it, smoke it, shoot it first. I uh, started snorting it. Okay. Um. Yeah. yeah. So. Snorting was it, it just like for, immediate love? Like, was it? I yeah. Mean, I mean, had you like fucked with opiates for a while before that? Well, or? I mean, I'd I'd played around with with like painkillers, like lower tabs and crap right. like that, but oxys weren't a thing yet. I mean, right, I, right. I'm older than you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, oxys is what did it for me. That's what yeah. got me into uh, opiates. Oxys came heroin. way after heroin. I was just like, that that's stupid. Like, yeah. why would you even do that? Just get some dope. And they're how much? Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Anyways, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, kept, uh, kept up with that, snorting it for about two months, maybe three. And then I, I, was one friend who was just like, why are you going to snort that? And he had some extra rigs and he was just like, well, um, here's the deal. I mean, you can snort it and be better in like 15 minutes or whatever and not really get higher. You can just do this much right here and pulled one up and he's like, and done. That was it. I was like, okay. Yeah. And I'd seen him shoot a few times. And I was like, all right, let me try it and did it. And and it was like, why would I ever do anything any yeah. other way ever again? Oh yeah. The needle changed everything for me. Yeah. It was all bad. Let's back up a little bit. Um, so up until this point, was there any part of, you know, your life where you got to the point where you like a, like me, I was, I was an everyday user of pot for a long time. You know what I mean? Was it like that for you? Yeah. From, uh, from like 14 and a half till, um, five years ago except for my times in treatment or jail yeah i was an everyday Every, smoker right at least yeah. and then like did before heroin was there a time you were ever doing anything else daily like or like drinking every so night so there or? was a period of 11th grade where i probably ate acid every day for a month really um, yeah and it was just like well you gotta eat twice as much the next day so and no I, shit there's yeah I've, how was it coming out of that I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just know it happened. There was a lot of a lot of hallucinogenics there, right. like when I was sixteen, seventeen. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's what's wrong with you. No. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it says a lot. I just listened to there this was... guy. I cannot for the name of me think of his name right now, but he did a documentary where he did he did uh, like hallucinogens for like a month straight, mm -hmm. and it got to the point where he like had like serious psychosis and paranoia, like. Not psychosis that he couldn't get out of, but uh, it took him like it took him like three or four months to of being sober to get out of it, you know, like, and so I, you know, I, 
towards the end of my addiction, like I did a lot of coke because I couldn't get any heroin, and they put me in a psychosis. I'm like, do you look like? I mean, you said you don't remember any of it, but do you remember like? Uh, I remember some. Yeah, like, it was reality, um, bending like. I was just really, really depressed a lot, really yeah, anxious. Of course, um, I, mean, just drank. I was fried. Yeah, there was. It was all bad. Oh, yeah. Um, but yes, there was that. There was periods where I did a, a lot of meth, really? like in high school, yeah. um, or when I wasn't going to high school. But right. uh, it still wasn't like it wasn't for me. And yeah. But you were just doing it because it was in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah basically, anything that got put in front of me, I was gonna do, and then did it in excess, and then did some more for however long until it was gone, and right went to sleep. I feel like Vegas is probably like rampant with a lot of things, but primarily uppers and cocaine. And yeah. Meth and Say this. Molly. If you want to ruin your kids' lives, grow up in Vegas. Grow up in Vegas. I feel Raise like, them there. you know, I've never been, but I feel like, you know, it's uh, that's just the party city, you know. I can't say that. I know a lot of people that did really well. I got some friends right, that I grew I'm up sure. with. They're doing great. Their families but are I'm great. I'm sure it's also really easy to do bad there. Very, very. <laughs> you live there nonstop. Well, it's like me, my brother, and my sister, we're all addicts. My family's all screwed up. Um, yeah. yeah, good times. So do all three of you all, three of y'all like, identify as addicts or? Uh, me and my brother do. He's in recovery. Yeah, but your um, sister's like chilling my sister's now. just like uh, <laughs> normal. Yeah, as as normal as she can like be. She had a like a problem problems with drugs, but she kind of got out of it. Yeah, she went to prison and oh, got out. And that'll change somebody real quick. Yeah, it, get scared. Didn't change me. It changed yeah. her. I don't think went to prison. Yeah, safe pee. Same thing here yeah, in Texas. Yeah. Only it's yeah. more like a the daycare version yeah. of it. So I mean, we you know we we already kind of talked about you know doing heroin for the first time. So I mean, like, what was your thought process like that for the first time you used a needle? Like, I mean, oh, I hated myself. I was right. like, why the hell would I do that? And yeah. then it was just like, where can I get some some How old were new you? ones? Nineteen. 19. Okay, so yeah. that was like pretty quick. Yeah. So you moved to well, Pittsburgh. Oh yeah, uh, it was. I mean, I I started school at Robert Morris and met a couple kids, and uh, we just we started partying and uh then it it was kind of like uh first time i did it i thought it was coke yeah really Uh, yeah because it was was powder powder. yeah Yeah. and i was like okay and uh then it wasn't and i was like this is the opposite of what coke that's not what how i thought it was gonna be and uh it just yeah yeah threw up felt like a million bucks did more yeah that's the shit. I've, people would like make fun of me sometimes. I'd throw up off opiates, but like as soon as you do that, like you just fucking feel so much. If better. I didn't, I didn't do enough, right. and I was doing more. Yeah, I'd so. throw up everything in my stomach, and then I'd just be high as fuck. Yeah, <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah, but um, so I mean, like, and you're living with your dad, right? So, and he's still flying. So I basically just, got my apartment or his apartment to myself, right. like. At least three quarters of the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm supposed to be in school. Um, I college. start started college and it, real quick, I didn't drop out. I just stopped going, and I f- then later on found out that that hurts you in the future. Like yeah. when I got serious about wanting to go back to school, I, I had a point three three GPA. I, I understand. Um, so I've ha- I had to make up for all that and right. had to get serious about things, take a couple of remedial classes as reminders of things and whatnot. Um, got to where I needed to be with it and found out all I got to do is go and do the work, and it's really not that hard. It's just very time-consuming. There are some things that are very stressful because there's right. a lot of it, but... But, uh... <laughs> Bottom line, I've I've learned that as long as I go and do the work, I, dude, I'm, I've made like one B at tech since yeah. I've been there. It's my third year there, and uh, right, yeah, I've been on president's list a bunch of times. Hey. It's like, hey, That's what's up? Still got a brain after all those yeah. drugs. <clears throat> so I mean, let's kind of back. We kind of jumped forward a little bit. Yeah. But, so you're supposed to be going to college. You're you do heroin for the first time. Your dad, like when you're a pilot, do you stay in the cities you end up in, or like is it like a schedule, like seven on seven off type deal? Or no, it's kind of uh, they just they have planned trips, like right. and you're some you take more frequently. Here. Yeah, right. Um, I thought most pilots were home every night, but oh no, 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 no. You're spending the night out elsewhere, and when he was working, he worked a lot. And this is still like 
pre nine eleven. Uh so yeah. It was Yeah. So you were doing heroin with what early two thousands? Yeah. Yeah. So like end of like ninety ninety nine, two thousand, two thousand one. Right. So like coming out yeah. of the Kurt Cobain era into the you know, new millennia. I'm sure mm-hmm. there's heroin everywhere still. I mean there still is now, twenty years later, you know, like yeah. so um But this is like pre opioid epidemic. This is Right. This is when people started getting prescribed things yeah. like like cotton candy and right. it was it was uh it was interesting to see that evolve, but Right. At the same time, I I didn't have a hand in it because I was doing heroin the whole time. Oh, yeah. um, at one point, I got on a on a maintenance program. It was methadone. No, it was Buprenex. It okay. was, it's basically buprenorphine, but right. it was like you shoot it IM. Oh, it was really? ampules of it. So I I used that when I didn't have dope. Uh, <laughs> Not get sick. Yeah, no. that was it. Um, and worked got a girlfriend up there she didn't know anything about it um just drank and smoked weed and working at a restaurant and yeah. going to the bar afterwards having a good time yeah so it was, it was kind of on and off again and then like there was times where it got real bad like with the uh, girlfriend or with heroin no with heroin oh, okay so much then i so. od'd <laughs> for the first time really? um yeah how old were you when you od'd 20 damn that's gnarly what yeah. what do you remember like do you remember coming to I remember waking up in a hospital. Okay. I know uh, my buddy that I was with uh, rolled me, took took the money out of my wallet, took Fuck. the points, took the dope, and left the apartment. And uh, somehow my dad like showed up a couple hours earlier than he'd planned and, and walked in Damn. and called 911. And I woke up a couple days later in the hospital. Damn. So what was the move for your family for you then after you woke up in the hospital? Oh, you need help. You need this. And uh, this is like, okay, well, I'm not going to do any of that. Uh, and my buddy was doing uh, on that, the Buprenex deal. So right. I got on, that's when I got on that. Oh. And I was like, but okay. I feel, you know, I feel like maintenance programs, like, A, it's not really sober, but like also like you're also being with a bunch of like heroin addicts. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, you know, like just making more connections. You know what I mean? Like it, at that point, it was just like it was a private doctor okay. um, that didn't take insurance. He was just making some money, right. like a lot of money, yeah. and none of the stuff was FDA approved at the time. Oh, so no shit. yeah, it was it was real sketchy. <laughs> um, so it was like, here, come in with your five hundred dollars, and we'll do the consultation and give you your first week, and then you come back next week and we'll talk and give you more. And oh, yeah. that was it. And it started. That was when like. Started getting Xanax with it. Started you know, everything else that went along with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the whole time I was in Pittsburgh, I never really, I don't know, I did coke a couple times, but it wasn't until, yeah, we'll get to that. I feel like <laughs> like coke is probably harder to get up there. You know what I mean? It's like. I, I tried it. It just wasn't really good. It's all stepped on by the time it gets there. Yeah. I was like, well, that's trash. I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. And, Kept doing opiates anyway. So. Right. Yeah. So how long were you in Pittsburgh? I mean. Um, I, th- I want to say four years. There's a, uh, so, yeah, so I'm working at this restaurant. I'm with this girl. Things are going great. Um, and then you OD. Then I OD. Or no, well, I OD. Then I got the job at the restaurant. Oh, okay. And okay, then okay. all that stuff, after, like, right. while I'm doing Buprenex and okay. still getting high every now and then. But then I'm just drinking and smoking weed and things right. are cool. And then I decide to go on a bender and then I, uh. Got caught, got yeah. arrested, and so I got arrested one time in Vegas with like a little bit of weed, but that was that was nothing. Um, yeah. I thought Vegas was pretty like. Well, back then it was a felony for I had like right. not even a dime, and it was a felony. Yeah, Vegas, yeah, but I, really I got it dropped. Weed, but that. I was a kid. Um, yeah. But in Pennsylvania, you get caught with heroin. Um, yeah, so they put me on house arrest. Oh, no shit. At 20 and, years old, on house arrest in your dad's apartment? Yeah, and nobody's ever there. He's not there. Um, so I Everybody got... Everybody come over to party with me now. Basically. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm getting dope brought to me, and the PO shows up one day, and I've got like three bottles of clean pee under the sink, and he looks through my apartment and finds everything. No I'm just shit. like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. I'm just yeah. denying everything. Um, <laughs> so, yeah... He takes me to jail, and uh, so I end up sitting there for six months. Yeah, and then that was uh, 
Fuck, yeah. that's a long time. I've never done. I've done like two months. That's the most I've ever done. I well, I got know. out on probation, um, and did all right for a while. Got back together with the girl, yeah. and then where was she doing in all the same this? Things. Was she complacent with heroin, or was she? Oh no, she she hated it okay. and wouldn't okay. have anything to do with it. So you just hid it from her. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Lied about Until you everything. Don't. Yeah. Until it was just like, well, I'm caught and I'm in jail. Yeah. yeah. You piece of shit. Yeah, or you yeah, fall asleep at 8 o'clock every night at her place yeah. or whatever, you know. That didn't happen until, like, after I got out of jail and I right. started using again. Yeah. Um, that that was the norm, yeah. trying to hide it. And then uh, then I got arrested again. Yeah. Or then I went to treatment Okay. Um, so, how soon times. after? So how soon after getting out of jail? Like, how long was the, the stretch of like doing good? Like, did you stay sober for a little bit? A couple or you months. Just went back to drinking, just drinking, and yeah, just drinking, yeah. smoke weed. A couple months later, I'm right. doing dope again. Yeah. Um, just went straight back to the same place. So what same led, people. What led to going to treatment? Um. Got arrested. <laughs> yeah. Again. Yeah. Again. While on probation. Yeah. Fuck. And then it was just like, okay, go to treatment again. Um. So yeah, did that, made some good friends, made some better connections. Um yeah. Get out, keep using, and then get arrested again. And then this time I'm not getting out of jail. Yeah. Uh they revoked my bond. Yeah. Um, because I violated probation, so I'm sitting there and it's like, well, all right. That was that. And that ended things with the girl. Um basically ended everything in Pittsburgh. Really? I, when I got out of there, I, I didn't know I was getting out. They called me up to the desk and they're like, Hey, pack your stuff. You're out. I was like, yeah, whatever. Walked away. And they were just like, no, seriously, get your shit. You're leaving. Okay. Yeah. Um, and this was like two months before my court hearing. Okay. And I'm just like, yep. Um, lawyer worked out something and, hmm. Did you have, did you have to it was, treatment? No, nah, it was just like time served, oh. more probation. Because it's probably uh, the six months you'd already done. Or it was, it was kind of like get out of Pennsylvania and don't come back. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So time served, so nothing. Like, no, still had two years of paper, and their um, PO was gonna transfer it to Leveland, Texas, really? where my parents had remarried and gotten. Oh shit! Yeah, they remarried and moved out here to be closer to my grandparents, and okay. uh, so. I get out and I hop on a plane and oh, here. here I come. So I'm here and immediately I'm like, this sucks. I'm bored and I'm just drinking like, oh, yeah. like a fish. Um, it's hard to find heroin out here, especially back then, I'm sure. Yeah. And then a friend from, from uh, Pittsburgh winds up in Dallas. Yeah. So I drop everything, steal a check from my parents, cash it, hop on a plane, go to Dallas shoot dope and i'm just like wow this sucks and they're like yeah it does throw some coke in the mix yeah okay. so yeah that's tar shit, and then yeah. i was just like all right never doing anything but a speedball again yeah. um so that's where i started doing that and then about two weeks into that i mean i'm so how old are you like 25 24 20 yeah 23 i think okay. at this point um and uh so we're staying in a real shitty hotel, eating out of leftover pizza boxes and the trash cans from like left out in the hallway of the hotel and shit uh, like that. And it's it's bad. I'm like, it can't get any worse. It, it can. Um, <laughs> that comes later. Uh, <laughs> but like, as far as I just I I had enough. Um, it scared the shit out of me. Yeah, living like, like that. Just living like that and just shooting that much coke. <laughs> just... uh, a couple weeks later i was just like hey i need help and they were like go to the airport you got to take it come home you're going to treatment they put me a dove tree i stayed there for two weeks and uh my great grandmother died uh, and i i went to level land for the funeral they let me go home like on furlough deal and then i just had to go back for outpatient after that yeah i was in like the first group of 10 people to go there when it really? opened yeah um, alumni on alumni then <laughs> yeah it was just the house at that time um, so I go to that funeral my brother flies out and so I stay up all night smoking meth with him oh, and drinking and uh, right before, the night before the funeral yeah so wow. we go to the funeral and he's just sitting there like passing out the whole time like oh, snoring man. loud snoring and I'm just elbowing the shit out of him um, 
That made me really hate math. Yeah. And really hate my brother. Right. Um, Hold on. But you were doing it with him, right? But I'm doing it all with him. (laughs) But in your mind, you're like, fuck this dude. It's his fault. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. It's crazy how backwards our thinking is. Oh, yeah. You know, like when we're in in our addiction, you know, like it's everybody else but us. Like, you know, it's the fucking dealer, you know. Yeah. So I get out and I'm just doing outpatient and, um, I, I ruined a kid's life that I was in treatment with. Um, he came out to Leveland, and we were we were drinking, and then uh, this is why you're still an, an yeah outpatient. still an outpatient like a week after the funeral. Right. Um, this kid comes over, he wants to get high. I'm just like, all right, come on over, man. We're smoking weed and and drinking, and then uh, end up like my sister is living there, and she's all strung out on meth with her her first husband and. Yeah. So, so we just start smoking meth, like yeah, just cause it was there. Just cause. Yeah. And then end up like, he has to go home at some point. He has to drive back to, to Lubbock. And so he decides he's just going to drink the rest of this whiskey and leave. And I'm like, you shouldn't go. And, and then he does anyways. Um, yeah. he got in a wreck and I never like, I know he was, he was alive. He lived. He was a little hurt, and then he got better. He went back to treatment. Um, but I got a call from, from Dove Tree the next day, and they were just like, hey, so this happened, and we know he was with you. And I was just like, well, okay. And I didn't go back. Yeah, you just didn't go back to IOP. Yeah. Didn't go. I was like, well, that's that. Oh, yeah. um, and then I just I kind of straightened up as much as that is being a, a normal addict just drinking and smoking weed. Right. So I start – Working a shitty job and and making some friends and just yeah. doing the normal stuff for a little while and then um heroin popped up yeah like out of nowhere and at this point it's just like coke every now and then pills every now and then so how did you living where, normal. how did heroin pop up I mean just somebody offered it to you somebody had it. Like yeah. somebody had it and he he said he had opium and I was like bullshit you got black tar let's see this. Yeah. Sure enough, of and he's smoking it, and I'm just like, "What are you doing? Yeah, Let, let's do this." Right. And uh, so, me being the the good junkie that I am, start shooting dope again, get a new connect, get his connect, and oh, yeah. start making him some money. Right. Um, Damn, it is ugly. So, it went I downhill mean, quick this, that at way. At this point, you're like in what twenty five still twenty four, twenty yeah. five. So something. How like that. how quick after your grandmother's funeral to shooting heroin? Oh, oh man, that was probably over a year. Okay. Yeah. So I, I mean, I did did all right. I mean, all things considered, just being the the right. functional, normal, not shooting dope addict that right. I was at that time, um, just partying. Yeah. Like yeah, like and all the like, other normal people trying to be normal, you know, right. and going and to that, the bar. And, that's almost like I mean, yeah, like shooting dope is worse, but yeah, also. Like, shooting dope almost always immediately gets you into some situation that you have to change, you know, like, what you, how you're living quicker than just partying. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of people that just smoke weed and drink. Yeah. And they'll do that for the rest of their fucking life, you know? And, and it'll never get bad enough for them to That's change. the kind of people that I was hanging out with. I was right. hanging out with friends. And you, hell, you know some of them that are still in the music uh, scene, still doing yeah, the same shit, yeah. just drinking, smoking weed, doing right. their thing. And that's, you know, and, I mean, and they're probably not all addicts. Yeah, you know? I'm not knocking it. Like, yeah. that works for them? Great. It doesn't work for me. <laughs> One thing leads to the next thing. Yep. As soon as something shows up, and that's what I really, really want, because uh, yeah. I'm not good, like, <laughs> unless it's, it's that yeah. excess, unless it's like... Yeah, unless it's hearing a train and grabbing onto <laughs> something. About and... the train. Oh fuck. So yeah, that's where where I go. Um, so <sighs> yeah, I just made you uncomfortable. No, no, I'm not uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm not uncomfortable. Uh, it's just funny. Like yeah, you know, not anybody knows about the train. And uh, for our listeners, the train is when you shoot cocaine, you get this bell ringer that's just why they call it the train, and so it's, it's it's ridiculous. You know, let me ask you something because. My my thing was speed balls, and then like when I couldn't get heroin, I'd shoot coke. Yeah. But did ever put you in a psychosis? Like for me, when I went to treatment, I had, I had all these videos on my phone of me like videotaping the night sky because I thought I was seeing UFOs. Like, did you have anything like that? Weird. Uh, I know I thought I saw a lot of shit. Mostly, it was things out the window, shooting right. stuff. Um, a couple cops pulling up or undercover yeah, cops. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, Paranoia, psychosis. Yeah. Like 
thinking I dropped shit on the floor. Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> like in the, in the chant in CA, like picking white scrapes off the floor. I'm like, I fucking definitely did that. Oh and, yeah. You know, smoked, yeah. And smoked and, and shot some weird shit. You know? I don't know what that was, but it, it I consumed it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, how long did that, that run, that next run happen? You know, you said a year after your, you know, grandmother, great run. A little while. And then I, I OD'd fairly quickly because uh, the dope wasn't good enough, so I started throwing coke in the mix. Um, can you keep the mic up? Yeah, fist sorry. Up you can move the, move the stand, as close, get comfortable. So, <laughs> I realized... You OD'd? Uh, yeah. 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 You OD'd um, off speedball? Oh, yeah. 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 So, I come to um, with paramedics and Narcan and, and all that... Um, I would eat a lot, dude. And really? I only did a lot here in Texas. Um, How many times total? Uh, eat nine, oh, something shit. like that. Um, uh, I never OD'd, and I thought it was mostly because, like, I mixed my shit. You know, I feel like it kind of kept my heart rate up-ish because I was, like, doing the fentanyl when it was here, but I was uh-huh. mixing it with Coke. And so I never OD'd, but I don't, know, I don't know. I never did a whole, whole lot when I shot. Like, I do, like, uh, it was. Know, uh, I know for a fact it was the coke that put me out a couple times. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because the the rush was too much. Yeah. Um, so I definitely felt like it was like, you know, physically feeling your heart beating. Like that's just well, like, it's scary. Bro. When you get like, tunnel vision, then everything goes black, oof. and then you come to and it's paramedics Fuck. and a broken car window <sighs> and stuff like I don't know. There's been a few times, and I can't really tell you the timeline. Um, right. It's there's, a, there's a bunch of years that blur together. Right. There was a time where I. Uh, talked a doctor into i was like hey this is what i'm doing and this is horrible help me i i know that this will work yeah. give me some uh some suboxone and i know that like coming off of this coming off of heroin and coke i'm gonna have a lot of anxiety you should give me xanax and they're like okay All right oh those are like a lethal like <laughs> so, mixture, right yeah well no 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 uh it wasn't but I There's something like so that i'm on like mix. 24 milligrams of, of suboxone and three bars a day and i'm like who uh, needs that yeah so anyways i'm selling those trading those just doing dope the whole time still but like for right. a little while i'm i'm kind of actually functioning right um there's a lot of time where i was like maintaining through some means or others just substituting things or or actually getting serious about a program at one point right a couple points um so up until now what was your longest stint of sobriety uh oh. Just over a year. Okay. So, yeah. And, uh, you know, um, we've kind of jumped around a little bit, and that's totally okay. And so, I mean, we don't have to go over your entire story. You know, yeah. I, I, the points you've hit on are pretty awesome, and it's it's crazy to hear. And, you know, eight eight ODs is pretty gnarly. Like, that's up there with the, the big-time real deal addicts I know. You know, you're one of them. Well, like, and, uh, it, the la- I'll, I'll just jump to the end. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, well, like, what was the turning point? What like? I got to the point where it – absolutely wasn't fun friends were just like bye um and and there wasn't any more help to be gotten and so i i begged for the last bit of help that i could get and i went to treatment the last time uh and let's see i had already met my wife now um Let's see. I so met, you met your wife before you got sober. I did, oh, I but I that. so I was partying a lot with my buddies who were in a band, and then I was living with them. Right, I, and, I know a little bit about this, yeah. And the whole time I'm I'm drinking and smoking weed, and then I flew back to Vegas for a friend's wedding, and I just I went just balls to the walls drinking, and I hurt for like a week after that, and I was like, I'm done, not drinking, I'm gonna take thirty days off, and I did, and I was just like, okay, well. I didn't drink for 30 days. I didn't do anything. I didn't smoke weed. I didn't do shit. I'm like, right. okay, so I'm good, right? And this is, I mean, I'd been in and out of treatment so many times. I'd gotten sobriety. I'd worked programs, like, but I'd never actually done something on sheer willpower. So I right. thought, at this point, my sick mind, I'm good. Yeah. Uh, so at this point, I'm just like, I meet this girl and things are good. And I'm just working and hanging out with her a lot. Um we hit it off. I have some drinks every now and then. I smoke a little weed here and there. Right. But overall, Nothing, you're okay. Yeah, overall, I was good. And I did that for a while, for a couple of years. And then um, we started having some problems. And, and every now and then, 
we would like have some off time. Um, yeah. and I would just be like, well, screw it. Um, and I would just go off the deep end for a few days really? each time. And, uh, didn't take long for, we had broken up and, uh, I met some, some even better connects with better stuff than I'd ever had before here. So it was back to speedballing real quick. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, at the end of that, it was it was just like I'm I'm gonna die, like no doubt about it. This is gonna be the end. Of, either I'm going to prison or I'm going to die. All right. So, uh, I asked for help, and the my dad, a pilot friend of his, ran a treatment center, uh, a retired pilot, right, whose son had OD'd and died, and uh, he wanted to open up a treatment center and help people. So I ended up at that treatment center like twice, oh, yeah. and then. Where was it at? I'm in Delray Beach, Florida. Oh, okay. Huh. So I call him and he's just like, I I can't do this for you. I can I'll try to contact another place. They might be able to help you, but I can't get you here. Oh, yeah. This other place got me in. And uh so I go to Jacksonville and as sick as I am, uh I do the whole rehab romance thing yeah. and that that that's just stupid. Oh, yeah. yeah does not end well i know like one couple that are still together that met in rehab but out of like 50 that i've met <laughs> you know what i mean so one yeah. of 50 maybe so like kinda. i get out of treatment after four weeks i i come back and a couple weeks later i decide i'm moving to atlanta to be with this girl and then i was there for Shit. literally three weeks before i was like hell with this and i drove back from atlanta through a blizzard really yeah um were you sober when y'all were there together? Yeah. So you stayed sober uh, that whole time. You and just... I saw, <laughs> I, I got to know this girl pretty well and she was not who I thought she was. And really? it was all bad. And like everything that I'd been doing, I was I come still on in here very, my daddy. <laughs> I was very, very sick Yeah. Uh, to say the least. Um, so I come back and a couple months after I'm back, I start, oh, uh, Actually, immediately after I get back, I start talking to my ex, who's now, now my wife. <laughs> um, and we just started talking. And a couple months into that, it was just like she uh, she was living in Houston at the time. And I was just like, let's make this work. And we both wanted to make it work. And so I just uh, I hopped on a plane and yeah. flew down there. And we drove back up here and we got a place and moved in together like right away really? and but this is why you're still sober and everything yeah and then i start working at a treatment center and then i go back to school and i graduated at south plains and i was just like that was that was a proud day man yeah, um man. and then i get into tech i'm just like yeah what the hell so yeah and it's funny because you know i've only known you sober and like i've all, i've only known you as like a really successful like <laughs> You know, like you have, good, was, you have a good job. You you already are kind of started on your career. Like you're a good student. You know what I mean? That's I was my, a mess. That's my favorite part about this is like, uh, you know, all the people that we get to meet in recovery, and especially where they're at, and like yeah. seeing the end result of all of it. You know, well, and, the end where I'm at today is definitely thanks to uh, my higher power, this program, my wife. Right, uh, dude, I would. I would not be where I'm at course, without yeah. her being in my life. Um, my family. Uh, uh, are you uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> are, <laughs> no, they, are you folks they, still married? They are. Yeah. They are. They're good. Uh, and y'all are all good. And... They, I've had to set some boundaries with them since I've gotten sober. Yeah. Um, the, the, they still live in Loveland? My dad's there. My my mom's helping my sister out up in Colorado right, right. now. Okay. So, but yeah, they're still together. Things right. are That's things good. are going as good as they can. Not man. a lot of people get divorced and remarried, and it works out. That's yeah, awesome. yeah. I just come from a crazy family. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people do. Uh, is there anybody in your family who you know identifies as an addict other than you and your brother? I mean, um, grandparents, aunt and uncle. No, I know I had some cousins, like distant family that I never really met. I had a great uncle or like my one of my grandma's brothers yeah who was a really bad alcoholic um and he uh he died in his mother's house and uh it was just damn 
is a shut in, didn't go out house. Like we, we had to tear that house down. It had to be bulldozed. Um, there's not much that came out of that house before then it was growing black mold in the walls and all kinds of, he, he was an old, uh, Vietnam vet. Yeah. He was a Vietnam vet. Like I found, found some pictures of him in the war and, um, it was not cool. Yeah. Yeah. Some things that happened over there that he was part of and probably had to be part of and and just how bad that really was. Yeah. I feel for him, man. And it kind of, kind of justifies like, like, in my mind. Yeah. I would have been drinking that much too. Holy shit. He saw some things. I think about that a lot because it's like, you know, the, the vast majority of us, almost all of us who end up, you know, drug addicts or alcoholics have some kind of tra- trauma, you know, mm. like, you know, 99% of the time. And like, it probably pales in comparison to some of the trauma that soldiers or other people go through, you know, sex slaves. And like, I, I hear stories from people that annoy me sometimes. And I'm like, dude, how are you? How did you never put a needle in your arm? You know, like my parents yeah. got divorced and I was sad in high school because nobody would fuck me. And I put a needle in my arm. You know what I mean? Like, so like, I don't know. It's yeah. just weird. But so, I mean, you know, you've been sober, what, almost six years? Uh, no, coming up on five oh, in, okay. in, yeah, three That's weeks. Awesome. It'll be five oh, no years. Shit. Cool, yeah. man. Congrats. That's what's up. What, like, what's been the hardest part of, other than like getting sober and staying sober in the beginning, but like, What's been the hardest thing that you've had to go through in since you've been sober? Oh, uh, I mean, even if it pales in comparison to your addiction, like if it's not, or vice versa, you know what I mean? Where if it doesn't, it's not as bad as your addiction, but you know, my what grandparents I mean? died. Yeah. Yeah. My grandparents died. Uh, seeing them. some friends die, um, that I'd, I'd known for a long time. Um, right. dealing with, uh, learning about, past traumas and stuff like that. And then working through that. Um, yeah. Yeah. But like, yeah, it, it probably pales in comparison to a lot of things and a lot of other people's deals. It's just like, I mean, that, that stuff's going to happen. People are going to die and it's yeah. part of life. And that's part of recovery. It's, it's just learning how to deal with that in recovery is, is rough yeah. and getting through regular emotions, um, right. living day to day life, especially early on, man. The, that first year is a roller coaster. It's oh, up and dude. down the first two years. Shit. Yeah. And you, I mean, you were in a relationship within the first year, right? And yeah. So that's crazy. And you're married to her. So that's all. And you have a great relationship from what I can tell, you know, I've been around you like a bunch and y'all yeah. are great and happy and she's awesome and you're awesome. And, uh, you know, I feel like, you can get through that first year in a relationship for sure. It's definitely done, but it's not easy. Well, it, <laughs> you know, so she's, she's got some, some traumas in her past, but she's not an addict right. and that's been, but she also doesn't like, I mean, she doesn't, she might have a couple drinks a year, that right. kind of deal, or might end up getting drunk like every once a year or something like that. And it's just, it's not an issue. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I've been around a lot of people getting high and especially with, with my job, um, yeah. working in behavioral health and working with people that are, are you also struggling with recovery clinic too, right? Or you uh, to- no. So, uh, I'm working as a recovery coach and part of that is working with people that are at the methadone okay. clinic and I've put yeah. in a lot of hours up there. I did right. my practicum there. Um, I feel like that's like a kind of a darker side of recovery is like, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I know a lot of people are like, you know, Suboxone isn't sober. And like, I, I kind of agree with that, but it's, it's better than shooting heroin in an alley, you know, like. Absolutely. Uh, I've, definitely better than shooting dope in the alley. Um, I, uh, I was, I watched, what was it? It's Russell Brand video where he just bashes methadone left yeah, and he right. Bashes it's in his book too. Oh, recovery. It, he's such a piece of shit about that. It's funny. <laughs> Um, all of the, but at the same time, like pages bash it too. I agreed with him for a long time until like I ended up in this role and I get to work with people that are, that are doing that. And my only experience with, with methadone or Suboxone was like methadone detoxing one time and treatment right. for like a week. And then Suboxone didn't work for me cause I didn't work a program cause right. I was getting high the entire time. Um, for the people that are, are seriously committed to it. And they have a goal like, okay, this is what I'm going to do for a year. And then I'm going to medically get off of it and have a program in place. It's just like their statistics, like their rate of success are so high really, because of that. Um, but the majority of the people that, that I'm seeing 
aren't really working a program outside of coming there. It's like they right. come and they get their, their dose and then they're out and that's and it. They go to the meeting that they have to go to or whatever. Yeah, or, they yeah. show up to that. That's it. Um, that would be my worry with me is like I feel like I would lean on it so heavy. You know what I mean? Like I, I wouldn't want it. I wouldn't recommend it to people for like long, long term, like yeah. more than a year. Um but if it's I feel something, like a year's a long time. It is, yeah. but I mean, hell, Dan, look at look at where you were at a year ago, right now. Sure. It That's kind true. of flies by. It does fly by. That's so, true. but I mean, I feel like the almost three years I've been sober. Just the way the way it got put to me, I'm, I'm talking to a guy at this conference in Austin, and he's a counselor, and uh, he works with a bunch of different outreach programs. Um, it's like, so I gotta work with the methadone clinic. He's like, yeah. I'm like, well, I don't really agree with it. It's just substituting one thing for another, man. And he's just like, okay, put it this way. Um, what's the quickest way to kill your client? I was like, what? He was like, send them back to treatment. Like, what? He's like, yeah, just drop their tolerance, give them a month off, and send them back out to do more dope. I'm yeah. like, well, okay. He's like, or give, give them methadone or, or suboxone or whatever for a year if they're seriously working a program. Right. That That's the whole catch. If they're seriously working a program, it can help. It, but another way it got put to me was uh, comparing it to um, like diabetes medication. It's like, yeah. okay, you take your medication, you make lifestyle changes, you live a different lifestyle, you're active doing whatever that lifestyle is, and your chances are great. Like yeah. if you just take your insulin every day, continue eating like shit, don't exercise, don't do anything, you're going to end up losing your foot anyway. So. Yeah. It's like, what's the point? Oh, yeah. um, there are success stories. I, I've heard a couple. They're few and far between. Right. The majority of what I heard is not around here. It's up east. Yeah. I've met some people that work in this field that, need, like, they will tell you that that maintenance is the best thing ever for opiate right. addicts. And I'm not going to disagree with them. I've got my own story with it where I didn't commit to it, so I can't really... Right. Can't really voice it, um, but like I, I get to see it in other people, and the ones who are seriously working it, they're they're living their lives normally, man. Yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, I've, I like I said, I don't really have a strong opinion on it or not. I'm, but I, I also like did it when I was like using, you know, yeah. and, and like oh, before I, I did heroin, like I took suboxone and got high off of it. So, but also thing after I, you've done heroin, I don't think it really compares. You know what I mean? So I, it's. People uh, tell me they got high off Suboxone. I'm like, how? <laughs> how? How? I just, I never did. I, I got well. Yeah. Um, I mean, after I tried heroin, it was just to not get sick, you know. Yeah. But before I'd ever done heroin, it, it was similar to being on opiates, you know, yeah. without without anything in my system. But, but, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter. And it's all subjective, isn't it? I mean, like. Yeah. And you know, I, look, I, it, it's it's one of those. Uh, there's multiple pathways to recovery. Yeah, exactly. and what everybody's recovery doesn't look the same, and and yeah. mine and yours probably aren't the same. We got a lot of similarities in there. Yeah. Cool. Uh, but I mean, the ultimate goal: getting clean and sober, living a healthy, productive life. Yeah, so. having some kind of spiritual connection to something that makes you know helps you change the way you feel without using drugs. You know. Yeah. Because uh, without that, I would I would have been lost. Yeah. For sure. But yeah, that's something I I didn't really touch on. Um, I'll just sum this up real quick. When yeah, I was no. a little kid, I, I went to church uh, until I didn't have to. We moved around a lot. Uh, we get to Boulder City for a year before we moved to Vegas, and it was just like, hey, you want to go to church? No. Okay, you don't have to. And then right. I really didn't ever again, uh, except for like family gatherings here in in Leveland or in Lubbock and right. Easter Christmas. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Like that was the only times I ever went until one time I was in treatment in Florida and, uh, we went to this church and it was, it was outdoor at this park oh, and cool. it was awesome. Yeah. And the message was just so on point. And then there was another time when, when I was in jail, eh, go figure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a guy brought it in. Know? A guy brought the message in, and it just it really hit me. But um, it wasn't until that time in Florida where I I really felt that connection. Yeah, the spiritual and, experience. Yeah, yeah, and got got more into it. And actually, started paying attention to things, um, looking at things a little bit differently. Right. But uh, definitely believed in a higher power because otherwise, there's 
eight or nine times that I should not have been here. There's yeah. been like, well, I don't know, just as many car wrecks that I've been in that I should not be here. Right. Got hit by a semi and got out with a, without a scratch. Um, that doesn't happen. So there's something, I believe something's watching out for right, me. And right. I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be. So yeah. I'm good with that. Is I mean, you know, my spiritual connection and philosophy changes all the time. And like, I first got when I first got sober, I was super Christian for like a year, and then yeah. I kind of fell out of that because like of some other personal political beliefs that, that I, you know, hold that kind of disagree with some of those views, you know. And like now, it's like I'm somewhere, I'm somewhere between, like, you know, agnostic and atheist. <laughs> like I, I know I believe in something. Like I know that I felt something, and I know that there's been some kind of presence in my life that has like you know, kept me from dying and helped me to change and helped me to like be better. And I'd like yeah. talk to it and it's just like talking to myself, you know? And I, yeah. And I, I don't mean, what does it look like for you? Is it similar? I mean, do you, uh, do you go to church at all? Or I mean, so yeah, uh, my wife and I, we go, we found a church after going to many churches here, right. trying to find one where we're just like, this is it. Yeah. And, and we found one where we, we felt that connection and we kept going back. We don't go every week. Um, yeah. We might go once a month sometimes. We might go every Sunday. We might go to, I mean, we've gone to some groups that they've had, some yeah. uh, Bible studies and, and like workshops that they've had that have been really, really great. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I feel um, like, you know, with all that, like where I'm at with it is kind of like, and the same thing with the program too, like, you know, it all, it all is there to like, teach you uh, a better path than the last one you know and like i kind of with all that stuff i kind of just take from it what i need when i need you know what i mean and i feel okay. like i feel like i don't know i mean is it seems like it's kind of like that for you like you you have your own personal connection to it but you kind of go with what you need like with when you when you need to go i mean yeah it well i mean it, and same thing with like with 12 step meetings. Right. That's I, what I, mean, I don't yeah. go all the time. Yeah. Um, I definitely don't go all the time anymore. I used to go. It's hard when you're in school, man. It's, <laughs> I used to go a lot. Um, but I'm still around people that are in recovery. I'm still working in the recovery field. Right. And it, that I'm, too. I'm sure I'm working still, in the like, industry is. Even like... being in school, even just being up there a couple days a week, being surrounded by people at the center and right. like being doing just stuff like this. Doing stuff like this yeah. with other people in recovery. Yeah. Um, it definitely uh, keeps me on track, and if I'm ever in a point where I'm just like, yeah, kind of feeling low or whatever, right. uh, at the very least, I'll I'll put on like uh, put on an audio meeting or uh, yeah. just get on one of the web deals. But more often than not, I'll just go to one, right. or I'll call somebody else that's in recovery and and shoot the shit for a little bit, grab some coffee, and yeah. and I'm good with that. Um, kind of get get lifted right back up where i need to be yeah that's but. awesome man so we're at an hour over an hour and uh it's usually about as long as we do is there i've been asking guests like you know if you could tell your older self anything at any point that you've learned now like what's like you know in one or two sentences that you would tell so yourself my older self your older self the person in addiction or before you got addicted, you know what I mean? Like, don't do heroin or, you know, whatever, whatever. <laughs> like, what would, what's tell the, my younger self? The words of wisdom you'd tell your younger self, yeah. Oh. Uh, At any point. Just, you know better and be kind. Quit being an asshole to people. Get your shit together. Um, it'll pass. All that pain that you're going through, you'll, you'll find where you need to be. Yeah. And just, just stick it out. You're going to be all right. That's awesome. Well, thanks for doing this, man. I appreciate it. Of course. Thanks, Jan. All right. Well, thanks, y'all. Bye.